Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Rupinder Kaur Chawla with the Midday News. The headlines Cabinet approves additional food grain under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana for next 5 months. Nation's total COVID vaccination coverage crosses 29 crore 46 lakh mark. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 96.56%. Health Ministry advises Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Kerala to take up immediate containment measures in districts where Delta plus variants of COVID-19 is detected. Enforcement Directorate has transferred the seized assets of over 9371 crore rupees from Vijay Mallya, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi to public sector banks. External Affairs Minister Dr S Jay Shankar calls for a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan at UN Security Council. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in the Mann ki Baat program on All India Radio on 27th of this month. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi pay tributes to Dr Shyama Prasad Mukherjee on his death anniversary. Today is Olympic Day. Prime Minister appreciates all those who represented India in various Olympics over the years. In cricket, India to resume play with overnight score of 64 for 2 against New Zealand on the last day of World Test Championship final at Southampton. In Euro Cup soccer, Sweden to take on Poland while Slovakia to clash with Spain in group E fixtures tonight Portugal to face France and Germany to play with Hungary in group F matches As the nation gears up for free COVID-19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years we advise our listeners to get vaccinated We also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as COVID-19 remains a threat to our health. Please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these four simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two meters of distance for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene and get vaccinated. For any COVID related information and guidance contact national helpline numbers 011 23978046 and 1075 and now the news in detail the union cabinet today approved the allocation of additional food grain under pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana phase 4 for another period of 5 months under it 5 kg food grains per person per month will be given free of cost to the beneficiaries covered under national food security act including those covered under direct benefit transfer between July to November this year the sanction of the additional food grain free of cost to a maximum of 81.35 crore individuals will entail an estimated food subsidy of 64031 crore rupees central government is bearing the entire expenditure towards the scheme without any contribution by states and uts the allocation in terms of wheat or rice will be decided by the department of food and public distribution The Union Cabinet also approved an agreement between India and St Vincent and the Grenadines for the exchange of information and assistance in collection with respect to taxes. The agreement mainly proposes to facilitate exchange of information between the two countries and to provide assistance to each other in collection of tax claims. It will help in facilitating the exchange of information between the two countries including sharing of information held by the banks and other financial institutions. The Union Cabinet has approved merger and transfer of all assets, liabilities, rights and obligations of Central Railside Warehouse Company Limited with Central Warehousing Corporation. It will unify similar functions of both the companies through a single administration to promote efficiency, optimum capacity utilization, transparency, accountability, ensure financial savings and leverage railway siding for new warehousing capacities. It is estimated that management expenditure of RWCs will come down by 5 crore due to savings in the corporate office, rent, salary of employees and other administrative costs. 
the merger will facilitate setting up of at least 50 more rail side warehouses near the goods shed locations this is likely to generate employment opportunities equivalent to over 36000 man days for skilled workers and over 9.12 lakh man days for unskilled workers the merger is expected to be completed within 8 months Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said the fugitives and economic offenders will be actively pursued and their properties have been attached and dues recovered. Enforcement Directorate has transferred attached and seized assets of over 9371 crore rupees to public sector banks who suffered loss due to the bank fraud by Vijay Mallya, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi. They have defrauded public sector banks by siphoning off the funds through their companies which resulted in a total loss of 22585 crore rupees to the banks so far the ed has attached assets worth over 18170 crore rupees which included assets worth 969 crore rupees in foreign countries the quantum of the attached and seized assets represents 80.45% of total bank loss The investigation by the ED has proved that substantial part of these assets were held in the names of dummy entities, trusts, third persons and relatives of these accused and these entities were proxy of these accused to hold these assets. Out of the total assets attached of 18170 crore rupees, over 329 crore rupees have been confiscated and over 9041 crore rupees have been handed over to the banks. Prosecution complaints have been filed against all the three accused extradition requests have been sent to UK and Antigua and Barbuda. The extradition of Vijay Mallya has been ordered by the Westminster Magistrate Court and confirmed by the UK High Court. Since Mallya has been denied permission to file appeal in the UK Supreme Court, his extradition to India has become final. The Westminster Magistrates Court has ordered the extradition of Nirav Modi to India. In a tweet she said the public sector banks have been already recovered 1357 crore rupees by selling shares India has administered 54,24,000 vaccine doses during the last 24 hours over 29 crore 46 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far on a nationwide vaccination drive the health ministry said India reported 50,848 new cases in the last 24 hours The active case load has declined to 643194 which is the lowest in 82 days. Over 68817 patients recovered during the last 24 hours taking total recoveries to more than 2 crore 89 lakh 94000. Daily recoveries continue to outnumber the daily new cases for the 41st consecutive day. The recovery rate has increased to 96.56%. Weekly positivity rate remains below 5% which is currently at 3.12%. Daily positivity rate is at 2.67% less than 5% for 16 consecutive days. Covid testing capacity has been substantially ramped up and 39.59 crore tests have been conducted so far. Union Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan has written to Chief Secretaries of Madhya Pradesh, Kerala and Maharashtra asking them to take up immediate containment measures in the districts where Delta plus variant has been detected. The variant has been categorized as a variant of concern. The three states have been asked to take up immediate containment measures including preventing crowds and intermingling of people, widespread testing, prompt tracing as well as vaccine coverage on a priority basis. Over 29 crore 68 lakh vaccine doses have been provided to states and UTs so far through central government free of cost channel and direct state procurement category. More than 1 crore 92 lakh covid vaccine doses are still available with the states and UTs. The Union Health Ministry said over 39 lakh vaccine doses are in the pipeline and will be sent to the states and UTs within the next 3 days. Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has said that it is heartening to note that 3 out of every 5 persons vaccinated in the stepped up drive on Monday were from rural areas where majority of the population resides. He complimented the center and various states for working in a coordinated manner in a truly team India spirit. 
Odisha has dispatched more than 31,000 metric tons of liquid medical oxygen to 17 oxygen deficit states and union territories. Odisha police have been ensuring the smooth transportation of medical oxygen to other states through dedicated corridors over the past two months. A report. So the viral transmission has reduced to around 3,000 plus cases every day. Fatalities due to COVID-19 have continuously been there in the range of 40 to 50 over the last so many days. The state lost 46 more lives to the virus in the last 24 hours, which is the second highest death toll on a single day after a record high of 47 deaths due to COVID-19 on the 12th of June last. Meanwhile, as many as 20 districts out of the 30 have reported new cases in either one or two digits, with Khodha, the home district of capital Bhavaneshwar, reporting the day's highest cases at 499 during the last 24 hours. Its active caseload has climbed further down to about 34,000 as of now. Garish Chandradas, AIR News, Bhavanishwar. In West Bengal, the figure of COVID-recovered persons surpassed the number of new cases. The state recorded 1,852 new cases in the past 24 hours, while the number of discharged persons was over 2,000. Recovery rate improved further to 97.31%. Now the state is gearing up to combat the possible third wave. More from a correspondent. In view of the possible third wave of COVID-19, the West Bengal government has constituted an expert committee to supervise and monitor the evolving situation and suggest suitable interventions for effective management of the pandemic. The committee will assess the requisite infrastructural, logistical and clinical preparedness for meeting the challenges which may emerge from the evolving situation. The committee comprises 10 doctors of state-run hospitals including six from the Institute of Postgraduate Medical Education and Research, Kolkata. The Director of State Health Services will be working along with the expert committee to ensure that all possible steps are taken to deal with the third wave. Earlier, the state government had issued an order to earmark beds in hospitals to treat children aged up to 12 years in case the third wave of COVID-19 hits. Madhu Parnadhar Chaudhuri for AIA News, Kolkata. In Madhya Pradesh, five cases of the Delta Plus variant of COVID-19 have been reported so far. In view of the advisory issued by the Union Health Ministry to Madhya Pradesh, efforts are being made by the state government to vaccinate all eligible persons before the arrival of the possible third wave of coronavirus infection. We have more from our correspondent. Health Minister of a State, Dr. Prabhuram Chaudhary, informed that four out of five people found with Delta Plus variant who got the vaccine are healthy and one died. A state is prepared to administer more than five crore vaccine doses by the month of October. Additional Chief Secretary Health, Mohammad Suleiman, informed that all the districts achieved their target of vaccination on Mega Vaccination Day on June 21st. Indore stood first, Bhopal stood second, and Ujjain ranked third. Khandwa, Chinwada, and Rajgarh district recorded highest achievement against the target. Meanwhile, the state on Tuesday recorded 65 new positive cases and 20 deaths, while rate of positivity has come down to 0.1%. Pooja P. Vardhan, AIR News, Bhopal. In Rajasthan, the recovery rate of COVID-19 has reached 98.80%. The number of active patients in the state has come down to less than 2,400. More than 45,000 samples are being tested daily, out of which less than 200 people are being tested positive. Just 137 people tested positive yesterday. The number of mucormycosis cases in the state is also continuously decreasing. We have more from our correspondent. The COVID vaccination campaign has once again gained momentum in the state. Average 2.5 lakh vaccines have been administered in the state every day in the last 10 days. More than 2 crore 21 lakh vaccines have been administered in the state so far. The estimated number of people above 18 years of age in the state is close to 5 crore 14 lakh. About 36% of these people have been given the first dose of vaccine. The state government has issued detailed guidelines for the smooth management of vaccination in cities and villages. The publicity is also being done about these vaccination sessions. Advanced tokens are being provided by BLOs to avoid crowd at vaccination sites. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Jaipur. In Kerala, as fresh COVID cases are reducing, the state government announced further relaxations in the lockdown regulations, which will come into effect from tomorrow. More from a correspondent. 
The relaxations are based on the test positivity rate in the region. Places of worship are allowed to open but with a restricted entry of a maximum of 15 persons at a time. But this is permitted only in those areas where the test positivity rate is below 16 percent. As per the new guidelines, banks will function on all five days from Monday to Friday, but the public will not have access to the branches on Tuesdays and Thursdays. In places where the test positivity rate is below 16 percent, government institutions and banks will be allowed to operate with up to 50 percent employees, and in those areas where Where the test positivity rate is below 24 percent, government institutions can function with up to 25 percent staff. Inter-district travel will be allowed. The complete weekend lockdown will continue to be enforced across the state. Major tourist sports will be gradually opened, adhering to strict COVID guidelines. But only those who received both doses of vaccination will be permitted to enter. Television serial shooting can be resumed indoors with limited number of persons. Mayusha for AR News from Tiruvannathapuram. Maharashtra government is planning to resume offline classes in COVID-19 free villages. Chief Minister Uddhav Thackeray has asked to explore the possibilities. More from our correspondent. Few villages in Maharashtra have not reported any case of coronavirus in last few months. In a review meeting of Education Department, Chief Minister Uddhav Thackeray asked to explore possibility of resuming offline classes of 10th and 12th standard in these villages. he has also instructed to prepare a proposal for evaluation of class 12 students on the basis of evaluation process of cbse and state government evaluation method of class 10 state education minister professor varsha gaikwad informed that education department is planning to cover educational expenses of students up to class 12 who have lost both parents due to covid-19 mr thakre responded positively to this proposal and asked to submit it in cabinet meeting with requirements of funds jivan bhavsar air news mumbai in maharashtra various social organizations are helping citizens in covid times in raigad district Swadesh Foundation is helping district administration in the tough times. In coordination with district administration, it has distributed food grains, food packets to workers and women. The foundation also supplied medical equipment to government hospitals in various talukas of the district. Right now, we are working with district administration of Raigad to provide door-to-door -door vaccination in rural Raigad and vaccinated more than 2,400 community members already. As the second wave declines. our focus has been to help revive economic conditions of these rural areas and we are working with 20000 families under swadesh building livelihood mission programs and providing agri and non agri based livelihood support to them and seeing very good results in bihar the process of registration for the clinical trial of bharat biotech's co vaccine on children between the age group of 2 to 6 years began today at aims patna Kids in this group will be given vaccine shots by the end of this week after being screened properly. Minister for Chemicals and Fertilizers D V Sadanand Gowda announced that an additional 61,120 vials of liposomal amphotericin B have been allocated to all states and union territories and central institutions today. Liposomal amphotericin B is used in the treatment for mucormycosis. The minister also informed that so far approximately 7 lakh 90000 vials have been allocated across the country maintaining an adequate availability to patients of mucormycosis. Bangladesh Railway has suspended all trains operating to and from Dhaka in view of the current covid situation in the country especially in the neighboring districts. The restrictions will remain in place till 30th of June. All Jassore and Khulna bound trains in the western part of Bangladesh Railway have also been cancelled. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Cabinet approves additional food grain under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana for next 5 months. Nation's total COVID vaccination coverage crosses 29 crore 46 lakh mark. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 96.56%. Health Ministry advises Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Kerala to take up immediate containment measures in districts where Delta plus variants of COVID-19 detected. Enforcement Directorate has transferred the seized assets of over 9371 crore rupees from Vijay Mallya, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi to public sector banks. External Affairs Minister Dr S Jay Shankar calls for a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan at UN Security Council. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in the Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio on 27th of this month. 
Vice President and Prime Minister Narendra Modi paid tributes to Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee on his death anniversary. Today is Olympic Day. Prime Minister appreciates all those who represented India in various Olympics over the years. In cricket, India to resume play with overnight score of 64 for 2 against New Zealand on the last day of World Test Championships final at Southampton. And in Euro Cup soccer, Sweden to take on Poland, while Slovakia to clash with Spain in Group E fixtures tonight, Portugal to face France, and Germany to play play with Hungary in Group F matches. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. The center is disseminating awareness of national helpline numbers for the benefit of citizens during the COVID-19 pandemic. The helpline number of the Health and Family Welfare Ministry is 1075. The child helpline number is 1098. For senior citizens of Delhi, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Uttar Pradesh and Uttarakhand, the helpline number is 14567. The helpline number of the National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences Nimhans for psychological support is 08046111007. The Ayush COVID-19 counseling helpline number is 14443 and MyGov WhatsApp help desk number is 9013151515. Welcome back to the Midday News on All India Radio. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar yesterday said it is crucial for international community to press for permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan to ensure immediate reduction in violence and protection of civilians speaking at the UNSC debate on UN assistance mission in Afghanistan Dr J Shankar said intra afghan talks have not resulted in a reduction of violence in Afghanistan Prime Minister Narendra Modi will share his thoughts with the people in the country and abroad in the Mann ki Baat program on All India Radio on the 27th of this month. It will be the 78th episode of the monthly radio program. The Prime Minister has invited people to share their ideas on topics he should address on the coming episode of the program. People can share their views in the Namo app or My Gov Open Forum. They can also dial the toll-free number 1800 117800 and record their message for the prime minister in either hindi or english people can also give a missed call on 1922 and follow the link received in sms to directly give their suggestions to the prime minister vice president m venkaiah naidu and prime minister narendra modi have paid tributes to dr shama prasad mukherjee on his death anniversary today mr naidu said that dr shama prasad mukherjee was a true nationalist passionate academician and visionary leader who cared deeply for india's unity and integrity in his message prime minister narendra modi said his noble ideals rich thoughts and commitment to serve people will continue to inspire all The center said it has sanctioned 1.12 crore plus houses and delivered over 48.5 lakh houses to the beneficiaries so far under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban in an exclusive interview to AIR News Housing and Urban Affairs Secretary Durga Shankar Mishra said these houses are not confined to four walls and a roof alone the houses will have all the basic facilities like gas connection proper sewage with septic tank On the eve of completion of 6 years of three major flagship programs Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban Smart Cities Mission and Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation Amrut Mr Mishra said these schemes are transforming tra- people's lives When I say we have delivered houses it is not house with the four walls 
It's a house which will fulfill the dreams of the poor man. Housing is a dream of every person who comes from the rural area to the urban area. He needs a good house. So this house has got water, drinking water. This has got gas to cook their food. This has got a toilet and a septic or a sewer system. And has got electricity. Everything possible. Then only we consider the house is complete. And the beneficiary moves in there. The full interview can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies. This program will also be available on our website newsonair.com and on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You can also follow us on the News on AIR app for updates. Prime Minister Narendra Modi today appreciated all those who have represented India in various Olympics over the years on the occasion of Olympic Day. In a series of tweets, Mr. Modi said he is proud of their contributions to sports and their efforts towards motivating other athletes. He added that Tokyo Olympics will begin in a few weeks. He wished the best to Indian contingent, which consists of country's finest athletes. He also urged everyone to take part in a quiz on my Gav app in the run-up to the Games. In cricket, India will resume its second innings at the overnight score of 64 for the loss of two wickets on the last day of the World Test Championship final against New Zealand at Southampton. Now the Indian team is leading by 32 runs. New Zealand scored 249 runs in their first innings in reply to India's first innings score of 217. Good weather is forecast for today, the reserved sixth day of the rain-affected match. If no win is possible in maximum 98 overs, both the teams will be declared as joint winners. In the Euro Cup football, Sweden will take on Poland at St. Petersburg, while Slovakia will clash with Spain at Seville in Group E fixtures tonight. Both matches begin at 9.30 p.m. Indian time. Final Group F matches will be played later tonight between Portugal and France at Budapest and Germany and Hungary at Munich. France has already qualified for Round of 16 and so has Portugal. But their opponents for Round of 16 will be decided after what happens in the matches between Germany and Hungary tonight. Germany and Portugal have three points and the same goal difference, while Hungary is last with one point and must win to advance. Yesterday in a Group D match at Wembley, England beat Czech Republic 1-0 to reach the last 16 and also topping the group. It will now take on the runner-up from the Group F at Wembley on 29th of June. In another Group D game, Scotland crashed out after losing to Croatia 1-3 at Hampton. Now let us take a look at the weather's update today. The national capital Delhi has a partly cloudy sky, minimum temperature was 28 degrees and the maximum may go up to 40 degrees Celsius. Mumbai has a generally cloudy sky with light rain. Chennai may have thunderstorm with rain. Kolkata is having a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Jammu has mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Srinagar also has mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Leh has partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Gilgit has partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. Muzaffarabad has mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening and in Dehradun it has mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. And now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again. Cabinet approves additional food grain under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana for next five months. Nations total COVID vaccination coverage crosses 29 crore 46 lakh mark. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 96.56%. Health Ministry advises Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Kerala to take up immediate containment measures in districts where Delta Plus variants of COVID-19 detected. Enforcement Directorate has transferred the seized assets of over 9,371 crore rupees from Vijay Malia, Nirav Modi and Mehul Choksi to public sector banks. External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar calls for a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire in Afghanistan at UN Security Council. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to share his thoughts in his Monkey Bath program on All India Radio on 27th of this month. Vice President and Prime Minister Narendra Modi pay tributes to Dr. Shyama Prasad Mukherjee on his death's anniversary. Today is Olympic Day. Prime Minister appreciates all those who represented India in various Olympics over the years. In cricket, 
India to resume play with overnight score of 64 for 2 against New Zealand on the last day of World Test Championship final at Southampton. In Euro Cup soccer, Sweden to take on Poland while Slovakia to clash with Spain in Group E fixtures tonight. Portugal to face France and Germany to play with Hungary in Group F matches. And with that, we end the midday news.